All right, now we're in the um, frames test in forces, and we're doing the last set of questions, which is the container unloader frame, and that uh, which is starting on question 14. All right, so now this question um, is uh, bringing in a mixture of different things, which are frames, sometimes they're frames, sometimes they're solved with truss elements or sometimes frame elements. Okay, now uh, when we're talking about frames, we, we're talking about things that have, uh, it's, it's like a truss except there's parts that have um, not just tension and compression, but bending as well. So here's a sort of a summary of the entire subject. So um, it kind of summarizes questions depending on what type of question it is. And really, all of them are, um, can be identified by what type of free body diagram we're looking at when we're solving it. Because basically a free body diagram is an engineer's way of concentrating all of their analysis on one thing at a time. That's the idea. And you're solving equilibrium for a particular body that you choose. And the body could be as small as a single pin joint, like here, or it could be the entire object, like the entire structure. And here's five different ways we um, split up some um, structure into different bodies. So the first one is concurrent, where we're splitting it up into a single point, like a bolted joint between truss members, for example. <clears throat> and so that's a concurrent force question. How do you solve concurrent? With a force polygon. Now, um, similar to that, and it usually we find this in the trusses um, section, is we do a co, that's concurrent, we do collinear. Now, collinear is actually very, very simple. It's as simple as you can get. And a classic example of collinear is a rope or a link with two pin joints, pin jointed link. In both of those cases, the force must be in line with the member or through the, the two pin joints. And there's only two forces, which means if it's in equilibrium, they have to be opposite. Uh, so it's so trivial that we don't normally sit down and go, we are now doing equilibrium on this member. We can just immediately say, oh, the force on this side, well, on the other side, it must be opposite. That's collinear. Now, the non-concurrence. Right, so with, with non-concurrent, what we often do in a problem is we come to the problem initially and we have to find reaction forces at the beginning. In that case, we're taking the body as the whole structure, the entire structure. This is mounted on the wall or something here. So we take every every member is one piece. And when we do that, we do our standard non-concurrent equilibrium equations, which are these three here, moments, forces, x, forces, y. And how do we solve these? We solve them by taking a moment equation on a well-selected point, which is typically a point that has too many um, unknowns on it. By selecting the moment on that, we eliminate those unknowns. All right, so in this case, the whole structure is the body. Or if we're doing the method of sections, we might take a part of the structure, half the structure as the body. All right, and now both of those are giving examples of truss, truss uh, solutions. And now there's this one where we have uh, what we call a frame, and that is the same as a truss, except you have a member that has three forces on it. And when there's three forces, it's not a truss member. All the members in a truss are two force only, which means they can only be tension or compression. This yellow member here can be tension, compression, and bending, three possibilities. And in that case, you have to be, um, you, you still start off with the reaction forces initially, but when you're solving this one, you're gonna solve the yellow one as a non-concurrent question. Whereas when we're doing trusses, we solve each one as a concurrent. So it's a little bit like method of sections where you drill right down to a single member and, and do a method of sections on that member rather than method of sections on half a truss. Uh, that's about it really. So we, we already have all the information or all the we have all the tools that we need to solve a truss a, a truss with a frame member in it or a three force <coughs> or more than two force members in it. And the tools basically are um, force polygon when there's two unknowns, moment equation when there's three or more unknowns. Hopefully, uh, 
bringing it down to a single unknown so you can solve it once you know that you may have two left you can switch back to force polygon to finish it off all right so that's a bit of an overview don't forget we have our um, contact points that table very handy for rollers and um, cables they're single uh, force and um, the pin joint which is very common that's um, two unknowns which uh, which is a x and a y or a force and an angle same same idea all right back to the quiz now we're looking at this one this is a um no well we'll just go go through the question so we have um first of all just a couple of things to note about this one where we've got units these units are all in tons here you know so because we're working in tons we have to be a little bit um careful about how we set these up do we convert everything over to newtons and work with newtons and meters and stuff well um, I vote that we can just handle tons and we'll work it all out in tons and then we can worry about uh, converting it to a newton at the end so it's trying to find the reaction force so yes when we're trying to find the reaction force we will have to put that in newtons and we're trying to find the reaction force at B which is this one here so this is we're trying to find what is reaction force here at B so there's an upwards force here and we'll assume there's upwards force here because if it's downwards that wouldn't be too safe so and we're trying to find reaction at b now this is really just a beam so we can treat the whole thing as one great big beam it has reaction forces like here all the forces are vertical so it doesn't really matter about which one's the roller and which one's the pin joint and we've got some forces you know the loads being applied and some gravity forces around the place and so it's really just a beam like that and so if we're trying to find the force here where do we take our moment here so we take our moment at a which is convenient because we usually write moments at a so to do this one we're going to start off by working out the sum of all the moments about a and that should equal zero so that's where we're going with this so if we take moments at a that means we need to know all of our perpendicular distances from a to wherever so what loads have we got well they're all in here so the structure is 600 tons now structure is this yellow bit so that's one this one here and that one is 600 tons i'll just give it 600 and the distance we need to know that distance we've got 1400 here and wb is this one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do it in excel because uh, there's so many numbers here i'm going to get lost pretty easily so um, we'll set it up in a table in Excel then shouldn't get lost so badly so we're going to take the weight of well we'll probably work from left to right so the first one would be well Gerda is 2800 and this one is 25 so Gerda's heading over that side so the cent this this center of the girder, if if that's 28 and this is 25, then means it's longer here. So this this center of the girder is actually here. It's actually around here. So that's wrong. It's on the left hand side. So that's the gravity of the girder. So I need to work out that distance first. That's our first one. So the girder force is good it's 120 tons and we could add in kilonewtons so that would be 120 tons times 10 
kill mutants. And distance in this case is um, its will is that wheelbase, which is twenty five point three. Millimeters. So we have twenty-eight point three. Oh, twenty-five. So it's from 26, and we subtract that from 28. So we have okay, 1.4 meters to the left. This is to the left. So maybe two force times distance. Actually, anti-clockwise that means so negative those two. Make distance in the right, and that moment is in Killer Newton Meets. That's the Effect of the girder around pivot point A. So this is moment around A. One. Let me just copy that. Next one will be um, winches. The winches weighs 100 tons. And the distance is zero. And so the moment is zero because we're on top of that. The next one along is the structure. Structure is 600 tons. And the distance is this one here, which was uh, 25183 minus 14. Eleven point one eight three meters. And you get that number there for structure. And oh, actually, portal frame is the next one. It was right in the middle of that. Um, five, two, two. Right, so there's, and the portal weight is. Well, the quarter frame is 200 tons. That's the quarter frame. What else have we got? Quarter frame, that thing. And then the next one is the boom. This one here. The boom is 140 tons. distance from A to the boom is half the length of the boom. The boom is water reach. That's 26, 27 meters out to the middle center of gravity of the boom. All right, then we've got the trolley and the container muzzle put them together. Uh, the container weighs, what's the container? Think, 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 think. Contains 31 tons. Oh no, we might have separated them. Trolley. Let's do trolley, which is 15 tons. Uh, 
and the distance to the trolley will be um, we reach plus school bus. Hmm. What else have we got? Container, now the container, which is 31 tons. Same, it's the same distance water reach plus the wheel base that is the container. I think that's everything. Yeah, nothing else has got weight. Yep, alright. So, this is our moments. We've got a negative moment from the girder because it's overhanging backwards. Winches is doing nothing because it's directly over A. Everything else is causing rotation clockwise. So, that's all the sum of the moments. So, when we add those up, the sum of moments is just adding up. Our total moment, and that's in kilo newton meters. All right, now we're trying to find what our force is. Our force will be um, a fraction of that. So let's let's just get some of these numbers down in our notes here. <coughs> All right, so. So some of the moments at A from, from our um, XL, so it's what, 6, 1, 5, 2, 4, 3, 4, 8, and that's kilo newton meters. Now we get some ridiculously huge numbers because it's a big structure. So what it actually is, is 61 million. Now that's because we're working in newtons. Had we worked in tons, it wouldn't have been so ridiculous. <coughs> Which we could do. But anyway, so what's the point of that? Well, the point of that is we know that this is causing a moment heading this direction. So the force here times that distance will equal that moment. So the reaction force will be equal to that moment. So we, we do all those moment equations. We get this one plus this one plus this one. It's a whole bunch of them. This is moment at A. And then we have minus force at B times real base. And all that equals zero. So therefore, force at B equals these divided by real base. So we just basically divide by the real base. That's this big number divided by the real base. So, reaction B. Equals that big number divided by the real base. And that's good. So two million four four three. And that's two minutes. Now just as a, a double check in case we've done something silly, let's just convert that over to tons. Uh, so we get you know, so we can tell if it's ridiculous or not. So if we get that number, and then we um, divide by 9.81, that will be tons. So I've got like 24, 249,000 tons. That seems a bit weird, because considering everything's only like 600 tons. 200 tons, 100 tons, and I've got 249,000 
that doesn't make sense. So something's fishy. And the issue is here, right here, we've used that one is in millimeters, should be in meters. I'll put a full stop there. All right, just recalculated everything instantly. So you can see there's a big advantage using Excel because I did do a mistake here. I had two, I had that one in millimeters. It should be in meters. Both of those should be in meters. All right, now I've got 700 tons on that weight, that on that wheel. That makes a lot more sense than 250,000 tons. That's going to be a pretty serious load. All right, so there's my numbers fixed up. So I did didn't get one correct. That 61 should be. The sum is a different number now. So let's check that. So the sum of the moments is 196, 209 kilonewton meters, and that gives us a reaction force of 7791 kilonewtons, which is about 794 tons, which seems pretty realistic, 794 tons. So uh, let's draw those numbers. Let's so see what options we have. Do we have tons? No, we don't. It has to be in kilonewtons, so we have to put it in as kilonewtons. The kilonewton there is uh, 7791. Point da da da. Four significant figures is enough, so that'll work. Kilonewtons. Check that. Alright. What? Oh. I just worked it out. Just worked it out. <laughs> okay, the problem was the length of the boom is 60 meters, but I used the length of the boom as WR, which is not the length of the boom, and then WR only takes you a few. That was the mistake. Alright, so what it should have been was. The boom is distance is mm, wheelbase plus 30 meters. So that's, that's 30 then. That would get us 7956, which is correct answer. <clears throat> Alright, so that so that answer there is 7956. Alright, so the problem was I took the beam as the length of WR, which is only to there, but it's not. It's 50 plus 10, it's 60 metres, so it's 30 metres plus wheelbase. You get to so that centre of gravity. Alright, sorry about that. And uh, this time we're finding the reaction force at A, which is this one here. Now that's going to be quite simply all the vertical forces uh, minus B. So reaction A, well, some of verticals first. The force is in the y direction. And the y direction forces are in here, so we can sum up this one. Everything in here. There's my sum, and so we can find the action A will be the sum of the vertical forces minus this uh, reaction force here, which was reaction B. We get this reaction in kilonewtons. Uh, 
Uh, 38874. Alright, find the total tension in the pair of four stays, which is these ones. The total is, uh, we can treat it as a planar thing. So this is a standard concurrent force question. So we've got this boom here. It's got gravity on it. It's got this weight on it here, causing a moment. And then this cable has to pull it back, uh, creating a moment backwards. So we'll take the vertical component of the force day, which will be pushing up here. So what will that look like? Just jot down that number. We had three, eight, seven, four. That was wrong. Surprisingly. So what's going on here is we have a beam. Like so there's our pivot point. We have gravity down. We have a trolley and container down and then we have this cable pulling back up and so the vertical component of this cable which will be this force y direction that force from that we can use components to work out what our tension force is so we'll just do everything vertical because it'll be easier that's figuring at point f so we're taking moments at f and if we'll equal the uh, the boom <coughs> Mass. Two hundred and forty tons times thirty, and that's clockwise. That's positive. Plus, well, we might as well add these two together. The container is thirty-one, and that is fifteen, so that makes forty-six tons. So that's forty-six times W R which is fifty three point nine four seven minus our reaction force at Y times that distance which is fifty meters. So FY equals all that divided by fifty. Six eight one. Point five six. Well, that's divided by fifty. Thirty three sixty three. That's um, what we're using here. That's tons and that's meters. So we did the five meters, that's right. So that's tons. So converting tons to kilonewtons, we need to times by 9.81 and 10 Right now we haven't finished yet because that's the vertical component of the cable, but the cable's going off an angle here, uh, which is defined by that 30, up by 30 and across by 50. So we need to work out what this angle is here. So it's 30 over 50 inverse 10.
increase. 20. So in in our three five, this this length here will be. We know this one, which is that we we actually just work that angle out there. So we know opposite, and we're trying to find hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine, so sine of the angle equals opposite. So hypotenuse, we're trying to find hypotenuse equals opposite over sine theta. Okay, there we go. So we take the sign of that. And ten point nine two divided by that equals two five four seven. And that's kilonewtons. Two five four seven point nine seven kilonewtons of tension in the force day. By the way, if it's in tension, it's a positive. If it's compression, it will be a negative number. Well, I actually got a green tick. It's a nice feeling. What's the magnitude of the force applied from the boom to the post? All right, so what's going on here? So I did, I did get. Hey, right, I'm going to check that. Okay, question 17, what's the for magnitude of the force applied from the boom to the post? So the boom, so this is this, we're talking about this joint here, this is a pin joint, and we have all the forces on the boom, so we could solve this using a force polygon, and work out what those are, or we could just do X and Y, so we have some X, which would be the horizontal component of the force day force. Um, so we can do it both ways. Let's just do a force polygon. Okay. Start off with something that we know from the question. Boom is probably should work in uh, kilonewtons. Boom is 140 tons. Down. 
1270, enter. There's my first force, it's the weight of the beam. Then I've got the weight of the, um, or we'll combine the other two together, which is the um, 31, no, it's 46, so 46 times 6 times 81. 51.26 Very good Right, there's my two forces. The first one is the weight of the beam. Boom. And this is the trolley and container. And now I have the force caused by the cable, which is an angle of 30.9638 degrees. 30.9638. So I should have uh, converted that over to a um, 180 degree notation bit. And the length of that one is 254797. And we'll move the end of that to the tip of that force there. Now that is all the forces that we've done so far. The force that goes from there to there will be the force at the reaction point at, uh, where it touches the frame. So that represents our force backwards. Our angle here, by the way, is um, has no decimal places, so we need to fix that one as well. Talk to me. So a gap in there, that's no good. This is caused by the bit of an image delay while I'm recording. I never thought I had it, but you've got to be careful. Take it a bit slower than normal. Right, now that one we want properties of. And the angle there needs to be fixed. Go to units and give yourself decimal places and angle like three of them and test that again and the angle's there 13.23 all right so that's our data for Question. <clears throat> okay, what is the magnitude of the force? Magnitude of the force applied. Okay, so that magnitude will be um, in the data. What's this one down here? So you can just hit that little symbol there and you can pick up the number from there without typing it. Here. Yes. Now that is in kilonewtons. So we're working in kilonewtons. We did that. <clears throat> so give us 
2244 in uh, Kilmins. Checking that. Okay, and the next question is the angle of the force applied. Now, I've got to be careful here about bodies. So, <clears throat> let's have a look at that free body diagram that I did in AutoCAD. What is it, a free body diagram? What body is it? All right, so it's going down this way. I might just draw a few little lines so we know which direction things are supposed to be happening at. So there's the weight force. There's the trolley and container force. There's the cable force. And there's the pin force. Connection pin to the frame. Now, what are these on? These are on the boom. So what does the something do to the boom? What does gravity do to the boom? What does the container do to the boom? What does the cable do to the boom? And what's this one? What does the body do to the boom? That's how you read that. There's what does the structure do to the boom? Now the question here is, what does the boom to the post? So we want to know exactly the opposite direction. We want this line to be going from here down to there. So the angle is not as it says in here, the angle is not um, 13 degrees, it's 180 minus 13. I'm going to reverse that in my own two cameras. And click that in AutoCAD, and we have our angle now of 193 degrees. Okay, back to um, put that one in. 93.2 what's the angle of the force applied from the boom to the post see the boom is pushing down on an angle the post is pushing up this way so that's the angle there degrees 193 good all right now next one tension in the pair of back stays all right so these are the back stays here so how do we calculate this one <coughs> Well, as I said, this is a mixture of frames and trusses going on. Now, we just solved boom as a frame member because it was more than two joints. But this force day, that's a two-joint member. Right? So we can treat this as truss. This is two-joint member. And this one here doesn't actually say whether or not it's um, a pin joint here or it's encasted. So we don't know if that's got force in it or not, like bending force in it. But because it's such a long distance from here up to here, it will flex anyway, and that's why we have a backstay, so we can treat it as if it was a pin joint there. Which means this one is totally truss. So all of these top members is, can be solved as a truss, which means all we have to do is go to H and do a concurrent force question at H. So solving for, oh that was the boom to the post, which we just did. And now the backstays, we can solve, we can solve this one by solving a solve a joint free body diagram at joint H. So we're, we're treating it basically as a truss at H. We can't treat it as a truss everywhere, but at H we can. We can say, okay, this is a concurrent force question. So we've got H point here, we've got a cable pulling on it like this. This is the force stay. This is also a cable, so obviously that's going to be pulling as well. And guess what that's going to be doing? It's going to push up, isn't it? Alright, so we solve this. Now we're going to assume that this is pure purely compression in this one here. It's not pushing sideways as well. So that's compression, that's tension, that's tension. Right, so force polygon. Now we've got this force already, and we've got a vertical one. Now we just need to know what's the angle of the back stay. So it's this angle here. Let me just sketch this up in AutoCAD. So that's 30 meters this way, and it is wheelbase 25.183 meters. And that will give us this angle here. Right, off to work at.
So 25.183 over 30. So I've got two di different diagrams going on here. I've got a diagram, this little diagram I started with, that was a diagram in kilonewtons. The diagram I'm drawing right now is in millimetres. So they're completely disconnected from each other. But what I'm doing is I'm just getting that angle. I need to know what angle this line is at, and the angle is 49.989 degrees. So this angle here, 49. That's my degrees for that angle. So now I can draw my force polygon. I'm going to use the cable, a vertical force, and this 49 force. So back into AutoCAD. I'm using the cable force, which is this one. And that's the actual magnitude of it. So grab that cable force first. Copy selection. Now I'm drawing a new force polygon. I'll do it over here. Now, which way is this going? Let's have a look. 149 degrees, that's pointing that way. It's in quadrant two. That's incorrect for point joint H. It should be going the opposite way, so I'll give that a reverse. The angle should be in the, th in the fourth quadrant. So there it is at 329 degrees. So we started off here and went down because we're pulling joint H, the cable is pulling joint H. Alright, then we have something vertical. Whatever that's getting to. And then we also have something at this angle. So we'll copy this one across. And stick them in here. Trim those together. I'm playing what I can, I better just double check that radius is zero. There we go. Right, that's my force polygon for joint H, and the direction of the forces is downwards, the cable, upwards, that's the post, and what's this one? 49 degrees, whoops, that's not right, it's not in quadrant 1, it's in quadrant 3, so that also needs to be reversed. And now that's what the angle is, 229 degrees, that's a lot better, and give an arrowhead on that one as well. So this is the force in those back stays that are pulling that joint down. Okay, what is the compared tension in the back stay? So that'll be the magnitude of that force. And we have there's the number there, 3398. And that is in kilonewtons. So combined tension in the curve, it is in tension, so it's a positive number, negative to if it was compression. And that's in kilonewtons, 3398. And question 20, second last question. What's the total force applied to that love part? It's um, actually because it was a letter. Anyway, what is the total force applied by the four stays back stays to the top post at joint H? Force applied by this thing and this thing to the top post. Now, it's going to be the opposite of what does the top post do to H? Right, so the total force that the top post does is really what's the compression in the top post. So the compression in the top post will be, um, that's all it's asking.
and the total force applied by the force taking to the top plate. So go over here okay, and find the magnitude of the top post. There's the number. And the very last question is, what will happen if the reaction force of the boom is lifted 75 degrees? So we lift the whole thing up at 75 degrees. What will it do um, to the thing? Now you don't have to actually calculate it. It's just a multiple choice question. We could calculate it though, if we wanted to, because if we went back to our, um, our reaction here, what it's basically done is changed the distance of boom here this one here so it's instead of being uh you know distance of 55 meters because it won't be the 30 meters anymore because it's 75 degrees uh, it will knock that right down in fact you could look at that pretty easily because it would be thirty will become um, Second function ten. Oh, ten. Is it? It's not. It's one over ten. So, point two six. Point two six eight. So that thirty will be times point two six eight. What does it do to everything? Well, it's going to change the reaction force here. Let's just see, let's just have a look and see what it does. So the reaction force was originally, reaction at B was originally 7, 9. So that's the weight on B. And then when we do that to the um, boom, basically bringing the boom in, really, then the reaction force is reduced to 6758. So the reaction B has gone down. So there's less weight on the water side, the wheel on the water side. Alright, so back to the question. So force B will reduce and force A will increase. So force A will increase. Yes, that's actually true. Both A and B will decrease. Now they can't both be decreased because if that happens then uh, the whole thing's gotten lighter it's not getting lighter it's just rearranging force B will decrease not right A and B will stay the same because this boom is always no, but A and B will stay the same no they won't stay the same one will go up and one will go down so force A will increase maybe or you can work with it I can't tell you the answer to multiple choice question that's silly all right that's it for the frames I will find I will look into that one that Marked up there, that one there, it's a bit of a mystery. Um, that's it.